The Chicago Bears have made their third round selection at pick number 75, an offensive tackle out of Yale, whose name I'm going to let Nick Whalen pronounce. So Nick, how do I say this? It's Karan Amagaji. Karan. So it's not Kieran. Okay, right. Karan right. Amagachi. Perfect. Nick's, I think, watched a little more of him than I have, which is to say that I saw a couple of Twitter things, looked up a couple profiles. Offensive line was not my position this year, but we'll break down our initial thoughts on what the selection seems to mean, what picking at 75 means, and what to look for in day three, all on this short little episode of Bear With Us. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bear With Us, a Chicago Bears podcast hosted by yours truly, Robert Schmitz, right here with my co-host, Nick Whalen. And Nick, normal housekeeping aside, let's just do a little reaction episode. The sure. Bears made their pick, and maybe, I think most interestingly, they didn't trade up in a day where we have seen trade after trade after trade after trade so far. Let's mm-hmm. start with, let's just dive into the pick first, and we'll talk about the methodology behind it later. Sure. Can, Kuran Amagachi. Yeah. Is that it? I'm literally thinking Tomagachi pet and making it an A in the front. (laughs) What do you think of the pick? Yeah. I mean, he was on my short list and this is, you can look it up on Twitter. Y'all, you know, I had a, I had a short list of probably 12 to 15 guys and he was on there because of what he offers. So like, if we just talk about his game quick and then we talk about his background, his background, Robert, I think is super fascinating. So, his game, he has 36 inch arms, 36 and an eighth, which is 95th percentile for arm length, 94th percentile for wingspan. Interestingly enough, small hands, 20th percentile hands. <laughs> yeah, I thought Braxton, me, I thought Braxton was long, and this guy's even right, longer. Right. Well, who who has small hands? Oh off its line. Oh Lu Fashinu. No, no, no. On the Bears line. Oh, on the Bears line. Uh, is it Braxton? No, Darnell Wright. Oh, thank he's you. Tiny okay. <laughs> I hadn't um, noticed that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's like under 10th percentile for hands. Anyways, so so he's got super long arms. And yeah, Braxton's long, as you said. So this guy's even longer. And um, that's what he uses he, in, in, in pass rush sets. I mean, he has very good feet. Um, we'll, we'll talk about his background and why he has good feet. But so you have really good feet with really good length. That's a very good, like just starting setup for a left tackle. And so he doesn't necessarily have like the mean streak that you want in the run game. He likes it, but with his athleticism and feet and length, he can get to the second level. Think of like, you know, dual or double team blocks right. and getting up right. there. Like he's, he's good at all of that stuff, which honestly makes him almost a clone. I think of Braxton Jones. Well, and I read a couple of interesting profiles that suggested that he's got a bunch of power from what you've seen. Can he knock guys back? Can he displace people? I I think he can. I don't know that he's nasty, but I think he can. More Um, a question of, it looks as if one of my favorite parts about the pick to jump in in 2021, he logged almost 700 snaps at left guard before kicking out to left tackle playing at Yale. So there's a little bit of GC versatility where Braxton, Mm -hmm. to use an example, Braxton's not a power player. He's winning with his feet. And so there's a lot of people that I've seen say, well, what if you kicked Braxton to guard? And I kind of don't think you can because Braxton just doesn't have the displacement ability that you're looking for in a lot of modern guards. And so I don't know Kiran's tape. I'm going to learn from Kiran's tape. You guys aren't going to hear me try to, I don't know, sound like a know-it-all when I don't. But if we find that Kiran can, can be a power player, then Nick, I am so excited that the Bears, is this the first time in almost a decade the Bears have picked a third round pick and we aren't expecting him to start out of necessity? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we kind of talked about that yesterday. Like we have depth on the interior now, which is a first for a long time. And now we're working on depth on the the tackle, which honestly I didn't expect, but I thought this was just such a good value. There were a couple of guys there that it made sense. And so this is actually the perfect guy because he's he's a raw person that right. you want as your backup tackle to work with. Again, the other two tackles are young too, but they all need time and development. So some some interesting things of his background, okay? So he grew up near Chicago. So you, I know that's a thing. You know, they they brought in 
you know, Robert Tunyon and TJ Edwards and, you know, like th- these Illinois right. They crew. love their local boys. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is, is kind of cool. His, uh, his family's interesting. So his dad is from Togo. If I'm saying that right. The country. Okay. And then he played college soccer in France and his mom was from Canada, I believe. And then they met and then, uh, I mean, long story short, they ended up in uh, America, but like, that was a thing he said that kind of drove him in his drive that his parents wanted better lives. And so they kept fighting for it. And that kind of instilled some work ethic in him. And so if you look at his upbringing, he played football in the eighth grade, didn't play as a freshman, played JV his sophomore year, played varsity for two years. And was really like late in terms of like the recruiting game. He had one um, FBS offer and then ended up going to Yale, uh, which obviously that's some talent right there. Just saying his work ethic academically. Um, and he had the COVID year. That was his first year. And a lot of people are like, oh man, that's a negative. He used it as a positive because he's like, I don't know a lot about football. So he learned a bunch of like the playbook, Robert, and like techniques. And he tried a bunch of stuff. And then he got stronger in the right. weight room. Think of how long he is, right? He's got to add some of that. So he used that as the kind of a stepping stone. Cause like without that, I don't know if he would be here today. Right. And he's young. I mean, he's 22, just mm-hmm. turned 22 in February. So he'll be 22 all the way through his rookie season. And I think Nick, what I'm most excited about when we talk about all of this, like, could we talk about the storybook notes? Like, Oh, Whoa, he's a bears fan. Cause you look on Twitter, you see him yeah. talking about how bear down till I die talking mm-hmm. smack about the bulls draft picks from a couple of years ago. Like he, this guy is Chicago made. That's fun. Right. You know what else is fun? Ryan Pulse said he was going to break the cycle around Caleb Williams. And here is offense, offense, offense. And in this yep. case, we're getting an offensive line pipeline going. And I really like that. Not to mm-hmm. mention, you could even argue Nick, it's forward thinking. Because look, I love Braxton Jones. My favorite part about Braxton Jones is that he's a fifth round pick that can play a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. But in the world of Nick, do you? Because I think you're a pretty big Bears fan, right? Do mm-hmm. you want to pay Braxton Jones $18.5 million a year? Nope. And I don't know if Poles does either. But mm-hmm. to make that move, you need to have another guy in the pipeline that if he's able to show you something as a rookie, you can, at the very least, leverage Braxton against this rookie or whichever direction you need to be leveraging them so that you mm-hmm. can say, look, Braxton, we would love to keep you. But we've got Kieran, and we do like what he's bringing us. So if you don't want to stay for our number, we just can't keep you. And at least if we're talking about the Bears linemen that aren't impact players, because again, love Braxton, favorite part, serviceable left tackle out of the fifth round. Taking a guy in the third who's got all the traits needs time. And you know what? If he ends up being a stellar right guard, good problem to have. Stellar left guard, good problem to have. Stellar left tackle, good problem to have. Playable. Or or swing tackle. I I was going to say, like, this is depth. You can't, we can't do this thing that I've seen a lot of organizations do, Nick, where we start complaining the moment that we're adding good players to not play. This is how teams win championships. Yeah. Because, hey, not 2024, but if in 2025, during the Bears' big push season and Braxton's final season as a, as a Chicago Bear, Braxton tears his ACL and you need a left tackle, having one that isn't Larry Borum makes almost literally all the difference. Who, 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 was, who was the right tackle we brought in a couple years ago that was just terrible? Um, which one? Do you mean Bobby Massey? <laughs> uh, no, I was, no, not Bobby Massey. After Rashad him. Coward. There, that's what I was thinking oh, of. Boy. It's like this, this is a move so you don't have to put Rashad Coward in and just. And, and, and well, don't forget, to, Rashad Coward was a pet project. He was a former defensive lineman. Yeah, but then then you have to chip and then you can't get guys into the routes. Like it's all like a, it's a compounding thing. Like, like when, when Pulse is multipliers, that's in the positive way. You could have guys that, you know, you have to use and they're like deficits. Um, but also, I, and I know we just learned it, right? But it's Karan. Okay, Karan. Thank Karan. you. Um, One other thing we should probably talk about is that there mm-hmm. are some question marks regarding his health. I know an O-line yeah. coach that a friend of mine talked to mentioned that the surgically repaired quad 
that he mm-hmm. has is a question mark that he doesn't love. So you got okay. some people that are going to love the pick because it's the right situation for somebody like Karan. You've got other people that are going to question the pick of whether he's ever going to get healthy. And I'm going to look straight into the camera and I'm going to say what I think, Nick. <laughs> and that's that if Caleb Williams is a hit here and Roma Dunze is a hit here. And at the end of the day, this was a nice try that didn't amount to anything. Whatever. Right. Like, it's one of my favorite parts about this pick is that the Bears didn't trade up for it. They took Mm -hmm. somebody that they think they can get value out of at 75, and they are content, it seems, to take four players, maybe a small trade down's coming in in 122, who's to say, but they're content with where they are this season and this draft, and yeah, they need an edge rusher. Like, Carl Lawson's there, and that makes an awful lot of sense if that's where the Bears want to go. But, Nick, I love the fact that they're not digging into the future pool like we saw the Rams do earlier today, like we've seen the Vikings do at plenty other occasions this draft. The Bears are content and patient, and I think it's a good look for them. Do you do you remember the offensive tackle from Cincinnati named Willie Anderson? Do you remember him? I don't, partially because that is such a basic O-line name. You know what I'm mean? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, well, you throw that at, you get a hundred Madden generated players. Willie Anderson's on that list, man, man. My background is just much different than your background. Anyways, <laughs> um, kind of a cool thing is he actually sought out Willie Anderson um, to like learn more about that's awesome. on his own, which is, which is something. So like you can kind of go through in terms of, you know, the, um, the injury, which is true, because that, that even adds more intrigue to this, because with that injury, he only played four games this last year, and then he um, couldn't do the Senior Bowl, which he got invited to, and he couldn't do any of the combine or athletic testing. So, like, this is a guy who's, like, super long, and you don't know the athletic testing. You just have to look in the film and guess, which is kind of what you want, you know, everyone to do, honestly. They were like, I can just watch the film and see that he's athletic. So he might be super athletic. Or worse, like we don't really know. It's kind of a question mark. It is funny, right? I mean, the other thing I think is goofy about this draft so far, Nick. I mean, okay, so this is no disrespect to anybody who I didn't evaluate, right? The guys that I did that we liked are all drafted, and they're all drafted like 20 spots ahead of where we expected them to be, which is a reminder that all the people that the PFF simulator, et cetera, et cetera, was filling yeah. between 30 and 50, maybe they were there uh, a little too high. Like, yeah. I, I can't remember. Was it the Falcons who traded up for Rook at 35-ish? That was I mean, shocking. All of the receivers were gone by 50. I apologize to anybody for the trade down and take a receiver at 50. There was none to take. Like, Pearsall, uh, what was this? We got Pearsall, Leggett, Coleman, and Ladd. Pop, 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 pop. And then a couple yeah. picks later goes Polk. And it's like, there's nobody here. There is mm-hmm. nobody here. I mean, all the receivers are gone. And so well, kudos sure. to Ryan Poles for anticipating sure. that with Roma Dunze a little bit. Oh, and yeah. also, Nick, you needed something, I hate to say this, to have gone wrong within a prospect you like's profile for him to fall to 75. And something like this, oh, yeah. this quad that he's got to fight his way back from. And the fact that that meant that he didn't get to test is unfortunately how you potentially find your next Eddie Jackson, which is yeah. not the comparison I'm making. It's just mm-hmm. saying this is the game, right? Well, these, <laughs> th- th- these aren't starters, y'all. These are developmental guys, special teams players, guys that fit just niches or packages like Bayless Jones. That's what these types of players are. Like if you get a starter out of the third, fourth, fifth round, that's an outstanding pick. Most of the time, like they talk about first round picks are 50% odds of hitting. Third round picks are like 20% odds of hitting. So, you know, one thing I thought that would be interesting, Robert, while we just are doing this really short thing is maybe talk about some players at, you know, for 122 that are some guys left that you like that you think would fit what Chicago needs. Oh, boy, I guess. Am I allowed? Am I still allowed to say Bo Limmer? Like some of the Hunter sure. Norzad types, Tanner Bordellini types, if he's still around there. Sure. I mean, I think interior offensive line sounded to me like the ideal pick there, but the room's getting a little crowded. You don't normally hang on to more than about eight offensive linemen. And nope. the Bears at this point, here's my question, okay? So you've got your starting five. You've got your backup center in Coleman Shelton. Is this your OL7? Or are you bringing a swing tackle? 
and you're having Karan develop. I well, I don't think you can practice squat him because I think someone will take him. So I don't think you can. So okay, so let, let's talk through it. So you said you're five plus Shelton. Now you can't forget about they signed Matt Pryor right. in free agency. They signed um Jake Curran in free agency. Both have starting experience. Right. Borum probably cut, right? Jatari Carter is a guy that they like. He's they do some like starts. him. I mean, you might be able to practice squad him just because he hasn't shown the whole world's worth of talent, right? Mm-hmm. But that's that's my question, right? Yeah. Is Pryor in particular is a swing tackle, isn't yep. he? Yep. But I had to make sure I remember that correctly. Well, but he, he he can play inside too. He can play everywhere. Sure. But it's more to say that would you expect Karan if Braxton was to get hurt? to be the first guy on the field, because I would doubt it. I imagine I, I, he's going to be the last guy to make their roster, spend the yep. whole season on the roster, and Bears fan, you are going to hope you don't see him on the field, because yep. him yep. being on the field means things went very wrong. Yes. Yep. I, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm expecting. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, too. And that just that's means there's no like, room for an ex, another offensive line. Right. Well, that, that that's the thing. It's like you have to kind of go through and be like, and that's one thing that was actually shocking with Green Bay trading down and getting more like five, fifth, sixth round picks when they already had like 10 is like, how many of these guys are going to make your roster? Like, I understand getting some not easy for camp, but like, who's going to make the roster? So go, I, I think, I mean, I'm crazy. I Troy Franklin is out there and that is just flooring to me. Like I would have taken him here and just been like, all right, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, Try try to mess with me, NFL. Like that. <laughs> but um, but other than that, I mean, you could argue a tight end at 122. Like a Theo Johnson and He's Eric fun. All. Man, good for Ben Sinnott. Like oh, you, you know when you just like your guys, right? Sinnott mm-hmm. was somebody who I've been really excited about, and I love it, even when it means that the Bears have no chance of getting him when we see somebody get their due, right? Because yep. that is yep. literally millions of dollars as much as you and i would joke nick about how atlanta's pick yesterday was an awful pick and hey from a roster building perspective it was it's a huge Mm -hmm. huge reason the bears got roma dunze i will be forever thankful and you know who else will be forever thankful probably michael Penix, because as much as people may say that oh well now this is a tough situation the falcons are really putting Penix behind the eight ball what do you think he made 25 million dollars i just haven't looked it up like the what do you think is the guaranteed contract for number eight overall in twenty twenty four? Because I bet it's twenty five, twenty eight million dollars, and that is doing I, well. I, for I'd yourself. probably say twenty eight. Maybe I guess that's doing well look, for yourself, Nick. Can we look it up while you're chatting? Sure. Okay. All this to say that it's been a funky draft. I mean, anybody that you and I thought they may be able to steal at seventy five has been pretty well long gone, and that's okay. I mean, not only does it mean that you and I, frankly, are evaluating talent pretty well in this case, but it also means that nothing's easy because all 31 team or all 31 other teams have their talent evaluators too, and good for them, right? Yeah, you ready? You ready for it? I am ready. Twenty two point nine. Good so for him, than, man. That's, that's life changing so, money for somebody who right. had two season ending injuries and is mm-hmm. twenty four years old. Yeah. So do do you want me to go since I I kind of I would love ready. for you to. Sure. So, uh, so I already mentioned, I mean, like if they tease me and have Troy Franklin there, I'll take him at 122, which I don't not expect him to be there I, on offense. I don't think, I mean, quarterback doesn't make sense. I don't think running back makes sense or O-line because we're just, we're, you know, you just talked about that. So tight end I mentioned. So I think Theo Johnson, um, Eric all, I don't think Jatavion Sanders is going to make it there, but they, I mean, he's still out there. Um, so switching to defense which is where I think it likely will be. Um, there are still some defensive ends that are out there now. Sadly, some of them just went. Some of them went late first, which made me sad. I was really hoping for Marshawn Nealon. Um, and then one oh, actually just yeah, went that was after, tough, man. Yeah. Well, and, and then and then and then Chris Braswell went. I was like, oh, like yep. two in a row. Um, but then right after the Bears just picked Karan, they had um, uh, Joan Ellis just went, mm-hmm. which I. So okay, let's just. I have a question for you on this one. Oh, the Packers just took a running back. Which back? Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn is a solid player. I don't he's know solid. about him in the third round, but he's a solid player. He's got speed. He can catch the ball. Just, Not much of a blocker. But what are they doing? They just gave jo- Josh Jacobs a bunch of money. Yeah, but they also had Aaron Jones leave, and they obviously believe in this one-two punch thing. 
with but they Apollo. resigned to AJ Dillon. I know that that part is weird to me. Maybe they're trying to maybe they they'd rather be one ahead, right? Or maybe they expect one of them to miss time with injury. Which I guess. so I so the the question I have for you is, I I I I have some gut feelings that flus and poles have some arm length, which I would uh-huh. stupid. That's why I don't like Cooper B. Super short arms. Arm length stuff for O lineman, D lineman, and also some athleticism, some RAS stuff, right? Some of these D end prospects that are out there, like like Jonah Ellis, who I like as a raw pass rusher, they're small. Same thing with Adisa Isaac, who's still out there, Penn State. Do you think that's like a thing at this point, or they would just take anybody? I think they might be looking at free agents already, right? Because just to be very realistic here, Nick. What's a fourth rounder going to do for you? Well, no, no. I'm just saying for drafting You're taking in general. Yeah. I think the backside defensive end can be a lot of things, right? I mean, the backside's the front side in a lot of these Shanahan systems because everybody sure. runs weak. So yep. you can't just have your guy get deleted over there. Mm. But at the same time, it kind of depends on the player, right? Like, I would argue that they want a sweat to set the strong side with. And then yep. that weak side defensive end, if they have a second chance at Montez Sweat, they would probably get another one, right? right? But also, if Dallas Turner had just fallen to them, then yeah, somebody like Dallas Turner can fit, even though he doesn't fit a lot of their weight uh, preferences that we so, see in a lot of the backside guys. So, so what if there's a guy that I like that gives me a little Dallas Turner vibes that's still left? Who? Who do you got? Did you watch uh, Jalex Hunt? I did not. Okay, so he's from Houston Christian, y'all. So if okay. you haven't heard of him, that's why. A late riser, okay? But he's got long arms, okay? Just just like Dallas Turner. And he's got the athleticism. So he's got, you know, like over a nine RAS. And he's like an athlete out there that's got good flexibility and bend. Okay. That is like, he's athleting. Instead of being a DN, kind of like Dominique Robinson, right? right? Trying to figure it out, but and, and not great in the run run game, you know, not good with identifying stuff. Like he's still learning it, but he's rising up because people are seeing way more pass rushing potential with him. Ooh, okay. So like, hey, like his arms are interested. His arms are 34 and 3 eighths, identical to Dallas Turner. Okay. Hey, I like it. Six, almost 6'4. He is, let's see here, uh 252. What I'm interested to see, Nick, so I had this idea while we were talking. It's going to sound like a giant meme, okay? So just brace yourself. But I almost wonder if there's a small trade down coming because two positions that I think fit really well that would fit what the Bears are wanting to do here, adding as many impact players as they can, Mm -hmm. this would be a great draft to add. I mean, we haven't seen, obviously, like Malik Washington off the board, right? So another receiver is where I'm going. To throw names at you. The idea here would be the Green Bay model of shotgun, like shotgun attempt at receiver. O-line two years ago, right? Exactly. Where it's Mm -hmm. you take, maybe you ask Caleb if he wants Taj Washington, right? Or you take Mm -hmm. Malik Washington. Or you take Anaya Smith. Uh, You could take all kinds of guys. I like him. I do too. And they'll be there in the fifth or sixth. And then if you trade it back to take one, it would give you another uh, pick to unironically address a major hole on the roster. Do you get where I know I'm where going? You're going with this. I, I know you would this. be. Tony Hunter. Taylor. Like <laughs> I called it. I uh, yeah, I mean it sounds memey is why I was prefacing you. I like to think we're a serious show that has fun, but the Bears net punting average is awful. Like, I, I, I know you, man. I know you. It's uh, nobody wants to punt. Nobody wants to punt. Right. But especially, Nick, if you're talking about a bend, don't break defense, if you can add eight to 10 yards of net punting average to your like to your special teams room, that is a whole series that Flus cares about. Yeah. So I don't know that they're going to do it. But you you talked earlier, Nick. This is what got me thinking about it of like, who's going to make the roster? Right. Yeah. And there's one guy I would like to see not make the roster, and that is. If the Bears drafted another receiver so that Dante Pettis didn't need to be on it, that shows your roster's moving in a good direction, right? And then on the other side of things, I don't think you need the guillotine. And that's not me trying to hate on our sweet, wonderful punter. He's doing his darndest. But (laughs) 
it is a spot that I think he has left room for improvement at. And if nothing else, I'm down to bring somebody in in camp. Well, it, it, field position matters. It gives you points both ways. Like it's a big deal. The, the other one that I have that there's, well, I got two positions left I'll cover as potentials, right? Please do. And, and, and y'all, just so you know, we're not live today. Robert's battling through it. So he is battling through to do this short little episode with oh, you. So my you sinuses guys are awful. He's a, he's I, a gamer. You want to hear gamer. something? You want to hear this, Nick? Because it's terrible. I got an ear infection in my left ear and fundamentally lost hearing while it felt like somebody was driving a nail into it. They prescribed me an antibiotic. The antibiotic kills all of my probiotics. And so then I immediately get the flu. And the moment I'm kicking the flu, I get a sinus infection. So it's been fun times over at my house for the last two weeks. You're not even 30. How is this even happening to you over there? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's because I had a son. And wonderful as he is, he and his daycare trips make for all kinds of disease passing. But this is not fun conversation. When, the when, when, it's his, when it's his graduation, I'm going to remember this episode. I'm going to bring this up to him. It's all his Do fault. Do you know your dad is tough? <laughs> that he battled through disease? He, he, he blamed you for everything. Um, all right. <laughs> so the other position, and this is one that you wanted in round one, is, is D-tackle. And yes. there are some guys out there that I think could at least be in the rotation. Uh, as early as next year. So one is and again, missing a body, right? Like yeah. Oh, yeah. if yeah. if you normally look at defensive tackle as a four man position with two starters and two rotational guys, they are Gervin Dexter, Andrew Billings, and Zach Pickens deep. So they need mm-hmm. another body, one yep. way or another. Edge, mm-hmm. I think they're also missing a body. Yeah, I think I, they know that they're missing a I, couple. I, I'd argue two edges. I, Probably. <laughs> but anyways, all right. So one guy that could do maybe both, and I don't know where you're at with him, is Brandon Dorless. Brandon Dorless is a tweener. He's he's basically Demarcus Walker. He could play edge, and he'd be he'd be the thick D end that pushes pockets, and he could be a three tech. He's played a little bit of both. He's gained weight. And he's lost weight in his college career, and honestly, he's one of the best players that's still available in this draft. I thought he was an he was on my list for seventy five. Where do you play him, Robert? Have you watched him or no? I haven't watched him. Uh, there okay. was a lot of these interior off- offensive line and defensive line basically after the second round. I just did not have time for this year. Gotcha. But okay. I've heard you talk about him before. And yeah. Yeah. if he does fit that floose mold of wanting an outside guy that can kick inside if you want mm-hmm. to, you can have too many of these people. So I wonder he, if Flus, he's a good ball player. Oh, he's a good ball player. The good ball player part we love. It's more mm-hmm. to say not all of your edges can kick inside. You will eventually yeah. have too many guys trying to kick inside. And yep. so I wonder where the Bears want to go here. But I mean, open book. And thankfully, yeah. it's not because all of their hole. It's not because they have so many holes that they could draft anybody. Like, for instance, Nick, would it really blow your mind if Wake Forest, Kalen Carson, a big, spindly, good mover that plays physical was somebody that they said, well, we weren't going to take a DB, but we could not believe he fell to them. If well, that kind that, of thing happens, it just wouldn't change. Cam shock. Hart? Cam Hart is another great option for that. Nehemiah Pritchard? Uh, Jalen Simpson, the safety, pops to me. Uh, Kalen Bullock's off the board, so that's not going to be well, your answer. Well, my, my safety's still on the board, the guy you don't like. which uh, Jaden Hicks? Jaden Hicks. He's he's still on the board. Uh, then Taylor Dennison. You could go through like Kitano Ladepo. You could go all kinds of different safeties mm-hmm. that they might draft. I'm just guarding yeah. my heart. <laughs> Dude, I, so I, I have a few more D tackles um, that I think would be on the list. Again, y'all, we're giving you names mm-hmm. for you to tonight look up, tomorrow look up, however you want to do it. Um, but Dwayne Carter from Duke. He's more mm-hmm. of a three tech. He's mm-hmm. more of an athlete type. Uh, Leonard Taylor, a little bit more of a disappointing. He's been a faller throughout this process. Didn't test out as well, oh. but he would be tempting. Tyler Davis, Clemson, um, or McKinley. I loved Jackson. him last year. Yep. Bummer to I see know, him fall. I know. He came out a year too late. He should have declared. But mm-hmm. Or McKinley Jackson, a high recruit that didn't really pan out. So th- that's everyone on my list I had. Um, I mean, and and also... I'm a big fan of him. Jaden Hicks would be awesome. He'd be the guy that would you, your third safety. You would just develop behind, and when you know Kevin Byard is gone, he he steps in. See, I don't know if he's got the speed to play with true free safety range, 
But if you told me that you were somehow disappointed in Jaquan Brisker, which you could be, I'm gonna, I'd let allow that, and you wanted Hicks to develop to then take Brisker's spot, I'll let you do it. I mean, I think a guy like Jalen Simpson out of Auburn, who's a much more true free safety, might make more sense just because, like you're talking about, you kind of need Byard's replacement sooner yeah. rather than later. But open book, man. It's the draft. It's yeah. Christmas, and we don't know what's in the presents. And mm-hmm. I love it. As far as final thoughts go, what you got? Because I feel covered. I mean, honestly, just like it almost just doesn't matter. Uh, Bre- Brett right. Coleman, who I, who you follow, I think I follow. I like Brett Coleman. He's awesome. He's a Bears fan. He's awesome. You guys should follow him. He said the Bears could light all these picks on fire. They got Caleb Williams and Roman Duze. The rest just doesn't matter. And I agree. It's more. It's way more true than it should be, mostly mm-hmm. because they made all these veteran trades for Keenan Allen, Ryan Bates, et cetera, et cetera. Yep, it's funny, right? Well. There's only two picks to light on fire because we assembled a team. And yep. I really like the way Ryan Poles has done it so far, man. Mm-hmm. Guys, if you like this, uh, make sure to rate us like five stars on whatever listening platform you got. Like the video, share it with your friends. And until next time, bear down. Thanks so much for bearing with us. 